The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Okay, so uh, this is, I could say, delta function day, a uh, break from linear algebra mostly. Uh, so it's, we're looking at another type of right-hand side, before in the differential equation and in the difference equation. So the right-hand sides up to now, uh, the one we looked at was a uniform uh, constant load, second derivative equal one, now uh, a point load. Well, in a way, we're now solving a whole bunch of problems because the point load can be in different places. So instead of solving one problem with, with one on the right-hand side, we're solving with a delta function. Okay, now a delta function is, you, you probably have seen the, and heard the words and seen the symbol, but uh, maybe not done much with a delta function. So let's, uh, it takes a little practice, but it's really worth it. Uh, it's a great model of uh, maybe what can't quite happen physically to have a load acting exactly at a point and nowhere else. So the delta function is, let's, I drew its picture, the delta function is zero, this is delta of x, is zero except at that one point, the origin, x equals zero, and then along, and back to zero again. So nothing's happening, no load, uh, except at that one point. And let me just, uh, so there's no uh, hesitation in when I change the, from x to x minus a, what does that do to a graph? If I have a function of x and I instead think, look at the, shift the function to f of x minus a, I shift x to x minus a, well, in this case and in all cases, it will just shift the graph. So if I drew a picture of delta of x minus a, the load now would happen when this is zero, because it's delta at zero is the impulse, and now this is zero at x equal a. In other words, the load moved to the point a. So there's, a, there's the, the shifting load, but, but the load could fall anywhere between zero and one. Okay. So delta of x, the load actually falls at zero. Well, we don't quite want that load at the boundary. So let's think of the point A, the load point, as somewhere between zero and one. Okay. Can I just take a little time to recall the main facts about delta functions? Well, when I say recall, I, it could very well be new to you. Okay, so that's what the delta function, that's my best graph of the delta function, but of course I'm, in using the word function, I'm kind of breaking the rules because no function, I mean the function is, functions can be zero there, can be zero there, but they're not supposed to be infinite a single point in between, but this one is. Let me go back to delta of x to match the, uh, these figures. Of course, they would also just shift along by a. M maybe, uh, yeah, maybe no harm in that. L I'll, 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 sorry, I'll, I'll stay there. And now I want to integrate it. And that's when a delta function comes to, into its own. It's, 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 its value in, of infinity is a little bit uncertain. What does that mean? But when we integrate it, what's the key fact about delta function? That the integral of a delta function from, let's say, let's integrate the whole thing. We can safely start way at the far left and go way to the far right because it's zero all the time there except at one point and you know so what's the area under that spike? It is one. That's right. So that's the fact, the sort of central fact about a delta function. 
that the area is 1. Oh, well, let me, while I'm really writing down the central fact, let me write, let me write it more specifically, more, more yeah, more, more uh, generally. Suppose I integrate, and this is delta functions now really showing up. If I integrate a delta function against some, uh, times some nice function. Now, have you ever thought about that? What will be the answer if I integrate the delta function against some nice function? Okay, so I'm still getting zero from this term all the way along until I hit the spike and then after it goes back to zero again. So whatever, it's got to be at the spike, at x equals zero, because I am put the spike here at zero, the impulse. So what do you think is the answer for that one? Yeah, it's the function. So, the, yeah, tell me again and I'll write it down. G of zero. G, it's the, it's the value of this function g. We don't care what it is to the left and to the right at zero because it's really at zero that this thing turns on and that its value at that point is just uh, gives us the amplitude of the impulse, which is g of zero. Okay. And of course, if g is the constant function 1, I'm back to that formula. But this is maybe the thing to watch for. Okay, I, actually there's, there's a lot built into that little thing. We'll come back to that. Okay, now, so that's delta functions uh, integrated. And now here are some pictures. These are the good pictures. Okay, so here is one integral of the delta function. It's a step function, okay. And the step, of course, will occur at the point A. If I, the, the integral of the delta function at a point A will be the step function that where the action happens, the jump happens, I could call it a jump function, at that point A. Because just for the reason we said, that if we integrate, da 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 da, the integral is zero, and then as soon as our integral passes this point, so this is the integral of the, this is, I integrate it. I, I, I integrate to get to this picture. I start with that delta function and I integrate and it suddenly jumps to one as soon as the integral goes past the spike, the impulse. Okay, so a step function, very handy function, step function, sometimes called a heavy side function named after the guy who, uh, the electrical engineer, I think, who, who uh, started, who first sort of worked out the rules for using these. Okay, let's integrate one more time, because we have second order equations, second derivatives, so we better integrate twice to, to, to uh, <laughs> see what sort of answer we get. Now, integrate a step function. So again, the integral is zero all the way to the left, so I'm still getting zero. But now, beyond this point, I'm integrating one. And the integral of one is x. So now that I would call a ramp function. That's, that's a nice short word for, for this valuable function. The ramp function is the function that's zero and then x. So what, oh, now, so, what derivative of the, tell me about that ramp function, just think about it. What happens to its derivative at the point A? As I run along and I hit this key point, what happens to the derivative of the ramp? It, it does the, what does the derivative do? I'm look, focus on that ramp now. What does the derivative do at that point? It jumps. The derivative jumps, the slope is the derivative. The slope jumps from zero, and here the slope is one. And of course, that's what that's telling us. Here's the picture of the derivative. What does the second derivative do? Well, since I integrated twice, I guess, going back two steps, I'll find out what the second derivative is. The, so the first derivative go, it takes a jump. The second derivative is the derivative of that jump, 
So it's got the impulse. So the second derivative, this is straight line here, second derivative of straight line. This is straight line here, second derivative of a straight line is a straight line. But at, the, at that point, the first derivative jumps, the second derivative has that delta function. In other words, that's that, that's that. Okay. I, if I keep integrating, and I don't need higher integrals in this, in today's lecture, uh, another integral would be what? If I integrate this function, then it's running along to zero. What's the integral of this? Uh, doesn't quite turn that steeply. Um, what's that curve there? If I've, if I've integrated the ramp, the, here's the integral. First, the next step up, the integral of the ramp would be? It'll be x squared. Yeah, it'll be a parabola. x squared over 2, the integral of that. And now what do I get when I integrate this one? I get something very important. Not important today, but important in a few weeks. It's, it's uh, and uh, very useful in computing. These have turned out to be uh, just the right thing. So again, now I'm integrating that. Everybody can tell me what is that, what's that curve now? It's the next integral, of course. The area under that will be x cubed over 6. Okay, so now that is a function. Yeah, it's worth maybe just for practice. What's the deal with that function? That's a pretty smooth function because it certainly passes right, it, does, it meets at that point. The first derivative meets at that point. The second derivative meets at that point. The third derivative does what of the spline? The third derivative takes three steps back down the line and you see that the third derivative jumps, right? The third derivative of that is the third derivative would be, shall I, f for c, for cubic spline or something, the third derivative will be zero there. And the third derivative of that is exactly, like back to that, back to that, back to one, is one. So the third derivative, so the cubic spline's so smooth, your eye doesn't see that. That, 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 it's, they're very useful for drawing many, many purposes. Uh, CAD programs would use such things constantly because they're, they're convenient, they're piece, they have nice pieces that you can fit together, and they fit together very smoothly, uh, but they really are two separate functions. Okay, so that's up to cubic spline, but we, our focus is, uh, uh, these would solve. What equations would those solve? Well, that takes how many derivatives to get to a delta. So what, what would be the equation? Uh, what, would be the, the, what would be the right hand side? Yeah, let me take the fourth derivative. Yeah, I'll just ask the question that way. What would be the fourth derivative of that cubic spine? A delta, right? Four steps back. So what is physically what, what are we seeing here? Do you, do you recognize what, what kind, in, if I ask now people in mechanics, when will we meet a fourth order equation? Fourth derivative equals a load. Anybody know the, the, the physical situation where fourth derivative, uh, where? Beans. It's the equation for a beam. Uh, a beam uh, has uh, the bending of a beam. So it's a beam. This eraser isn't too very much like a beam. But anyway, I put the chalk on it. Well, nothing happened. Um, sit on it, whatever. Uh, it'll bend. And that bending will be given by a beam equation. OK, so later we'll meet the beam equation. So it's. The most, most equations of uh, physics, mechanics, uh, biology, everything are second order. Newton's law is oh, often the reason, but uh, we get up to fourth order sometimes. Okay. And very seldom get higher, hopefully. Yeah. Beams or plates, that table would, that, uh, the table would be a plate and it would have a, f 
fourth order equation. Okay. Let, let's start solving this problem. What's the solution? What's the general solution to that equation? Minus the second derivative, so notice the minus that I like, and the load is now moved to the point A. So the solution u of x, let, let's, let's write down all solutions. It will tell me one solution first, one particular solution. What is one function for which minus the second derivative would be the delta? That's what we got over there. So just bring that blackboard over here. Change its sign because of that minus. And what are you going to tell me? Minus a ramp. Minus a ramp. And the ramp, of course, will ramp up at the point A in order to match where the, so that it's second, the second derivative of that, the second derivative of R will be delta. The minus is correct, and the point is correct. Okay. Now, does that solve our problem? No. No. The ramp is going upwards. It's not zero. What am I forgetting? What do I not yet have? There's more to be more to this solution, just as there was for a uniform load. What, what was the more? Constant and, and I, I want two, two uh, homogeneous solutions, null solutions, two solutions with derivative equal, second derivative equals zero. One of them is C and the other one is yeah. DX. Thanks. Okay. That's the whole solution. Okay. So what I want to, I mean, my, we need that C plus DX. We got two boundary conditions to satisfy, just as before. So I need two constants. That'll do it perfectly, and I'll get an exact answer. Okay. And it, it, it well, so this is a ramp. What? Oh yeah. Before I go further, let me just let's let's just how what I think about this. This is a ramp that that turns which way down, right? This is a with that minus sign. That ramp turns down at the point x equal a, right? It, and its, its derivative goes from 0 to minus 1. The, the, derivative, the slope of this guy drops by 1 because of the minus sign. Uh, uh, sorry, the slope, yeah, the slope of the, of the sorry, the slope of the, yeah, the, the slope of the ramp function of minus the ramp, it goes at 0, drops by 1. A and what this is going to do is take that ramp and adjust it to, the, to go through the fixed end. So let's just do it. Let's just do it. What are C and D? What are C and D? My point A, let, let me draw a graph. That's always the best thing. Always draw a graph of, your, of these solutions. OK. So let me put in the point A. OK. So I'm drawing now a picture of the solution from 0 to 1. I'll graph it. It's got, OK, what, what, what do I have here? Well, let, should we just plug in, plug in uh, the boundary conditions and find C and D? That's the direct way. What is C? C, I'm going to plug in. Hopefully, I might find it from just the first boundary condition. If, I, if I'm starting from 0, well, this guy certainly starts at 0, right? It, it, the ramp hasn't done anything until it gets to A. And this guy is certainly 0. So what is C? Gone, right? OK, good. Now what is D? OK, well, all right, what's D? Uh, let's see. Let me draw the... So th there's a, there's a dx, and d won't be 0. I want that thing to be 1, to be 0 at point 1. So I, I want to determine d. OK, let me, let me determine d. So what is the minus the ramp at x equal 1? I'm plugging in x equal 1. Is that right? I'm going straight forward here. Plugging in x equal 1 into this boundary condition. I'm ready for this guy. OK. What's the ramp? So it's minus, and the ramp is, 
well, if this ramp is, if, if a ramp is shifted over, then that's shifted over. So at x equal to 1, what's the ramp? How, how high has that ramp gone? 1 minus a, right? The ramp is x minus a. At that point, x, at, at the point x equal 1, it will be 1 minus a. So I think I get 1 minus 1 minus a out of that. Minus the ramp plus d times what? 1. I'm plugging in x equal 1, and that's supposed to equal 0. Good. So I'm doing, I'm doing this the sort of the systematic way of writing down the general solution, discovering that d, what do I discover d is? Put it on the other side. d is 1 minus a. And of course, don't forget that it's multiplying the x. So, okay. All right, let me just draw the picture. It's a, uh, yeah, here's how I think about it. The solution is, away from x equal a, what does the solution look like? To the left of x equal a, what's my graph going to be? It's going to be a straight line, right? To the left of here, there is no load. The, so the equation is second derivative equals zero. The solution to that is the straight line. In other words, until I get to A, this thing hasn't started. It's only this straight line. It, the solution does something like that. It's a straight line. And I guess, actually, that's what it is. Because the C isn't here, and that's all we've got left. So that's, that's that straight line. What happens? What is it for the second half? Tell me what the solution looks like in the second half, in between a and 1. It's going downhill. Why? Because it's got to get back to 0. And it's, how is it going downhill? It has to be linear. In this region, it has to be linear. Why? How do I know it's linear here? Because one way is to say the equation in that region is second derivative equals 0. Second derivative equals 0, straight line. This is my solution. It's 1 minus ax here, and it's whatever it is to get back to 0. What, 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 what will it take to get back to 0? Let's see. Well, we could plug in, we've got one expression here, or, or I could just look at that. I could say, okay, what's the equation for the straight line that's, at, at this point, what is the, yeah, it's 1 minus ax, hmm, I want it to be linear, I want it to get to zero. Let's see, if I, if I want that, it would be great to have 1 minus x times something. I have to figure out what. Because with the 1 minus x at x equal 1, that'll drop off. That's linear. What number, what's the key here? That, 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 that slope, I, I want to match them up there. At, at, and that's the point x equal a. The, this is supposed to match that at x equal a. Do you have an idea for what I should take? What, 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 what do I put right there? A. A. Look at the symmetry in those two sides. 1 minus a times x going up, 1 minus x times a going down. At x equal a, it hits that point. Right. That, so we've solved it. We could think about this different ways. I could have got that 1 minus x. Uh, let's see. I could have got it from the formula. In a way, I like to get it from the picture. I see it sort of. I see the point. What, what happened at that point? What, what are the jump conditions? This is another way to ask to see how the delta function works. What are the jump conditions? 
I want to know, when I ask about jump conditions, I want to know what are the conditions on u of x, the displacement? What are the conditions on the slope, u prime of x? That would be, that'll be the strain when we're speaking about elasticity. Uh, what's, the, just for u of x, what are the, what's, what's the statement about u of x from the left and from the right at that, at that uh, point of, uh, at that cr critical point? the point of the load. From the left and from the right, u of x is the same. u of x matches up. u of x from the left is that height. u of x from the right is that. I, I want to write down those jump conditions because that's another way to see this. u of x, u at a from the left should equal u. How, do you want me to just say u is continuous? Yeah, I'll just say it in words. U is u of x is continuous at that just means it doesn't jump at x equal a. So that's you could say that's a non-jump condition. The function itself doesn't jump. Why not? Because we're talking about some elastic bar on which we put a point load. The thing isn't going to break. The bar is going to, the displacement is going to be continuous. But what's the condition on u prime of x, the, the derivative, the slope? So that's the function. And now tell me what's the deal on the slope? What's the comparison between this? I have a slope of whatever it is going along here, and I have a slope of a new slope. So u prime of x, the slope jumps, right? And how much does it jump? Minus 1. It drops by 1. The slope because, I've, because of my minus sign. So this tells me that the, yeah, let me write that down. The slope, u prime of x drops by 1. That would give me, this is a different, a, another way to say what the equation is asking. The equation is looking for two pieces of straight lines that meet at A, but their slope drops by 1. Oh, by the way, what were the slopes? It's good to graph the slopes, too. Uh, let me take out the, let me graph the slopes. The slope u prime, the derivative, du dx. OK, what, what's the slope here? Slope is 1 minus a in this point, right? The derivative is 1 minus a along to here. So slope is 1 minus a, da, 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 da. And now at x equal a, the slope changes to this one. And what's the slope of that second part? Minus a. Look, it did it right. Minus a is the slope along here. You see 1 minus a. It dropped by 1. The 1 disappeared to leave a slope of minus a. That's what the, the, you know, I guess if I just imagine a, imagine a bar. I'm fixing it at both ends. OK, there's a bar. Da, 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 da. And we'll, I, I'm just thinking for people who like to see a physical picture of what's happening. That's what this is. We'll do it properly very, very soon. OK, I've got a bar. It's a very light bar. Its, it's, it's weight is not a, a problem here. But it's got a load at the point. So I'll measure x going downwards. And at the point x equal a, I'm hanging a heavy load. OK, Lo a, a load. How do I draw a load? Maybe a, like a big weight or something. OK. That's a, that's a hip. What, what's going to happen to this dumb bar uh, when, when, uh, when, I, when I do that? Just to tell me physically what's going to happen. What's going to happen above the load? It's going to stretch, right, tension. The, the, the bar is going to. 
the load is going to pull the bar down. It's going to stretch this part. And because nothing special is happening, it's going to stretch it linearly. And then what's going to happen below the load? Compression. So the slope will go negative. And if nothing special happens, so it'll, the slope will be negative, but it'll be constant. The slope will drop from this to this. The displacement, the, the, that point will go down a little bit. That little bit it goes down is actually the height of this, is, is that because that's the displacement. That, it'll go down a little bit. It'll stretch above. It'll compress below. And we see that in that picture of the displacement. Displacements, it, 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 the displacement's all down, right? Displacement, you know, nature is still going to, all the, the bar is going to move down. That's why this uh, function doesn't, this function, the displacement function is positive. It goes all down. But the slope function is positive here, so, so tension is positive slope. Stretch and compression is negative. OK. Well, all that to solve um, this equation. Maybe while we're on a roll, let's solve the free fixed guy. So this is our, we might as well be systematic. This was the fixed fixed problem. Let me below it solve the free fixed problem. So it'll be minus u double prime, that's the second derivative, equals delta at x minus a. Same, same setup. But now the top end is, what's the, what, so it's free at the top. What does that mean? Slope is 0 at the top, and the, but it's still fixed at the bottom. OK, so this will be now free. fixed. Let, let me go straight to the picture. Let me go straight to the picture of u of x. So there's x equals 0, there's x equal 1, here's the load at a. What's up? And I can, I, I'll, while you're thinking about that, let me draw a picture to match this picture, a bar. Fixed at the bottom, but not at the top. OK. And it's got its load here hanging down. OK. But it, let's do it math first and then s check with the picture. OK. What have we got? Two or three ways now to try to get the answer. The systematic way would be to write down this solution and plug in the two boundary conditions. That'd be a, that'd be a straightforward way. Yeah, let's, uh, we could even start by that. So u, u of x is the particular solution, the, the ramp, plus any cx plus d. And uh, just plug in x equals 0. That shouldn't be, that'll be easy. If I plug in x equals 0 in, in, the, in the free condition, what does that tell me? At x equals 0, this corner, this ramp hasn't started, so the slope is 0. The slope of the constant is 0. What do I learn from this boundary condition, u prime of 0 equals 0? That c is 0. Before I learned that d was 0, but now from that condition I'm going to learn c is 0. Uh, do the picture for me. Do the picture for me. The, what's the graph of the, uh, this is a graph of u of x. Remember now, it starts from zero slope, because it's free at the top. What does the graph look like in the first part? Yep. It's a straight line has to be a straight line because there's no force. And what kind of a line? It's going to be horizontal because it starts out horizontal. 
The, the slope has to be zero at zero, and nothing changes until A. So it comes along there. Right? Okay, so that's now I've started out with the right, left, uh, the correct boundary condition at zero, which was no slope. And now what's it going to do the other half from A to 1? It's going to be, again, it'll be a straight line, right? Because there's no force there. And what happens at the, all oh, the action, of course, is at the point A. And what action is it? Tell me what sort of a line, how do I finish the picture? I, what do I do? I, I start here, right, because the, the, bar, the bar is not coming, falling apart. U, U is continuous. I don't get a gap suddenly. And now what do I do from there? Only thing I can possibly do is I have to end up here, and it has to be a straight line. That's it. That's what the picture will have to look like. And what does that <coughs> correspond to in the, in the, in the uh, picture in the, in the, for the bar? So, well, what happens with this bar? The above the weight, what's, what happens to this top part of the bar I in that picture? And what happens to the lower part of the bar? So this, is, this was at the point x equal a, this is x equal one, 0, and this is x equal 1. What happens above the bar, above the weight? It just, it just a rigid motion just goes down, but because what happens below the weight is same compression or compression still happening. This is still squeezed. Shall I try to draw it? So this is after, after the weight. This is, this got squeezed, but this part did not get squeezed. And that's what we're seeing here. Uh, no, uh, a fixed displacement, so this, is, this means, that, that picture means that all the, all the pieces of the bar here got moved down by the same amount, whatever this, we don't know that number yet. And then, uh, Below it, they got compressed. Well, we're almost there, but we don't yet have that solution. What's the, uh, how, uh, uh, come back to this picture. U of x is, is continuous, got it? And what's the, what's the real condition that's going to determine where we are, what, that, what those heights are, the, the numbers in there? It, it's got to look like that, but what, what it, we got more than that, we got to know what are the actual, what is that height? What is this? What's the slope? Here the slope is zero. Here the slope is what? What's the slope in the second part? That's the key. And you know what it has to be, because what happens to the slope? If, if I have the second derivative as a delta function with that minus sign, the slope drops by 1. And the slope here is 0, so the slope here is minus, minus 1. And, now, and it has to get through there, so what is the function? What's the function that has a slope of minus 1 and comes down to 0. It's, it's, it's got to have a minus x in it, and what's the constant to make it come out right? Yeah? What do I write now here for u of x? 1 minus x. 1 minus x. That has a slope of minus 1. The derivative is minus 1. At x equal 1, it comes to 0. That's it. And what do I write? What's u of x up here? And therefore, right there. What, what's, what's the, yeah, what, what's the displacement there of all this 
bit that moves down, how much does it move down? One minus a. Why one minus a? That's the right answer. One minus a. Why is that? Because it had to match up at x equal a. At x equal a, this and that match up. At x equal a, that slope, that function, and that function match up. So the, the slope, the, the slope picture is zero and oh I'm sorry, this can't draw it because I've got I'm at the bottom of the board. The slope picture, maybe I can draw it here. The slope picture is zero along the here and then it drops by one to one minus a. So that's a picture of u prime. Zero and minus one. This, this is the thing to look at. Okay. That's, uh, that's hard work when you were seeing delta functions the first time, but of course the functions did not get complicated. We kept a clean uh, uh, example and from which, which, we which we matched up with a figure and we've got the answer and we've got a couple of ways to do it. One is this uh, uh, standard systematic plug-in boundary condition way. The other way is this u of x does something here, then the slope has to drop by one, and that, that's, the, that's the key to everything with the boundary condition. So in a way, we have a piece to the left and a piece to the right, two constants here, two constants here, and somewhere there are four conditions that settle those four constants. You know, we could have a straight line here, a straight line here that's two and two, but what are the four conditions that, that settle those four constants? Well, we have a boundary condition here that's one. Boundary condition here is two. We need two more conditions to settle the, the two pairs of constants, and there they are. That's the condition at the, and that, two, two, more, two conditions at the, at the uh, jump, at the, at the uh, discontinuity. Okay. Now, I've got to do the discrete case. Are you up for the discrete case? The case where uh, we're doing, we have a difference equation. So we're doing k u equal a column of the identity, column of i. Let, let me just take it to be, let me take a specific column, say 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Let, let, let's suppose we have five, I'm going to draw a picture now. We have five, because I made it five by five, one, two, three, four, five. Here is zero and here is six. So h is one over five plus one, one six. That's the delta x. And now, and my equation says, so what does my equation say? Remember what k is. k is, u is then u1, u2, u3, u4, and u5, the unknown. k is our old friend with twos and minus ones and minus ones. Okay. I'm going to find the solution. And this will be a particular, this will be the solution that has a, a, a load at this point. This is like my point A, right? Here the point, in the continuous case, A could run anywhere between 0 and 1. In the discrete case, I've got five possible load points and I pick the second one. Five columns of the identity matrix, five places to put that one. I put it there. Okay. Now, can I draw the picture here? Uh, shall we do the, which should we do first? Let, shall we do free fixed? Because that came out even easier than fixed fixed. Notice the, the solution here had two parts. This is the way I would write that answer. 
because you could draw a picture, but if you want to write the formula, uh, what would I do? I would break it into two pieces, uh, 1 minus a up to the point a, because that's what it was running along here. And then down here it was 1 minus x, x greater or equal a. Yeah, that's important to mention. You, you have to have some guidance on how to write the answer. And when the answer has two parts, this is a good way to write it in two parts. It's a little too, you're compressing it too much to write, to use that ramp function. You can better to split it apart into, the, into before A and above and after A. What's going to happen over here? Oh, yeah. All right, let, let's just, can we take a shot, shot at this problem? And let me mention again, in the review, this, that'll be in here this afternoon and every Wednesday afternoon, um, I'll just be ready for questions. Please bring questions. Uh, they can be questions on the homework, even better if they're questions on other problems, questions on the lecture, Questions, it's, yeah, uh, uh, questions are essential to make that help session um, helpful. Okay, all right. What do you think's cooking here? What at a typical, a typical uh, somewhere in the middle here. I'm I'm going to draw the U's. I'm going to uh, uh, shall I just draw them? And, and now what's my condition? My, I've got to put the boundary conditions on. Oh, I have put the boundary conditions on. By, by putting that 2 there, I did the, I, I'm up to here. Okay, let's, let's do that one. When I put, when I chose K and put a 2 in there, I was picking the fixed, fixed boundary conditions. So can I just say it's going to be beautiful? The solution over there is going to look like this. The solution over here is going to be up, up, up. It's going to be a straight line, but only points in a line. And it'll be straight line down. That value, that value, that value. Those will be u1, u2, u3, u4, and u5. OK. And what's more, the, this is going to drop by 1 again. Actually, I didn't have to redraw the picture. It falls right on. It, it, in case x is 2, 6, so that it fits that picture, the, uh, I'm claiming we have another extremely lucky case. If we can use the word lucky for, for math, uh, that I'm claiming that the way the you remember for the uniform load with a one with when the when we had second derivative equal one, the solution was a perfect parabola, and the discrete solution, the difference equation, was right on the parabola. For this fixed fixed case, it's going to happen again. So the, it won't always happen. Those are the only two important right-hand sides I know. The, they're the two most important right-hand sides, and those are the two lucky ones. If we have a constant, it lies right on a parabola. If, if we have a delta function, it lies right on a ramp. And there it is. So that's, the, that's what the solution looks like. Now, I have to figure out what these numbers are, I guess. Yes, what are those numbers? Oh, well, actually, if it falls right on, I know the numbers. Yeah, so A is 2, 6, 1, 2, 6, yeah, so let me, let me keep 2, 6, okay. So A is 2, 6, that's, that's, that's that value. So. I, I, let me say what I think u is. 
so this was a picture of you. That's you one, two, three, four, and five. And now the, I think it lies right on that, so it's going to be one minus two sixths of x going up, and one minus x times two sixths going down. My, my point is that I'll be able to figure out what that, uh, this is you then. This is the you. Okay. You're going to say why. Before I, uh, uh, let me pause before putting in numbers and say why is it, how do, why, how do I know that the solution is right on the function, the, the, the continuous solution? Well, can I draw a set of pictures just like those guys for discrete? Yeah, let me just draw those for discrete here. That that's, that's shows you the, the magic. Okay, so, so there's a, I'm going to draw a vector now. So I'm not, it's, I'm going to have to lift the chalk. It won't be a function, and it'll be the delta vector. So it'll be the delta vector delta with, so there's point one, zero, one, two, up to six. It'll be the delta vector. Well, if I just draw the delta vector, the delta vector has a one there. So the, this is the delta vector. Do I need, I, well, you can see that it's, it's, the delta vector is now going to be the, the vector of all zeros, and it's got a one at the key, at the impulse, and, and then zero. So it's a discrete impulse. That would be a better word. Discrete impulse. Impulse at zero. Okay, yeah, so let's, let's stay with an impulse at zero. All right, what is the, what's the next guy? What's my next picture? Again, let me put in zero. One, two, three onwards. Okay, minus one and so on. Um, what do I want to do now? What do I draw a second? I always look over here. What did I draw a second over here? The step. Now, what, what, why did I draw a step function? What, well, how did I get from here to here? I integrated. I took the integral. Okay, so how will I get from here to this picture? I don't integrate. I add some. Okay, so coming along from the left, all these all along here, this sum is all zero because it was always zero. So it's zero, 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 zero. And then, oops, wait a minute. It's, is it a one there? Yeah, I think it must be. So here it wasn't a zero. Wrong. Here it's a one. And what is it next? What's next to it? One. Because I'm, uh, I'm adding more and more zeros, but I have that one now. Okay. A discrete step. It's a discrete step, zeros and then ones. Okay, now comes the set. So uh, what am I going to call that? Well, a, a, uh, no, a step, right? It'll be a step function, step vector. And the, oh yeah, if the sums of the delta vector gave me the step vector, how do I go the other way? The, what do I do to the step vector to get back to the delta vector? Difference. Differences, right? Sums in one direction, differences in the other. So the di differences of the step vector are the delta vector. Okay. The step is the sum of the deltas, and the delta is the differences of the step. Okay. Now for the crucial next guy. What's it going to be? I add, wait a minute, what's up? I'm looking for that picture. Do I get it? 
Uh, yeah, I hope so. Or we, oh, look, we ran out of time. I don't have to do this, but I will. Okay, so, uh, so I'm getting, as I add, I get zeros, and then it's one, and then I add on one more one. Look, you see what's happening. I, I run along at zero, but I, I, I'm going to look at the book to see um, whether that jump should come here or here. So I've got a little bit of this to finish next time, and I'm open for any questions this afternoon. Okay, thanks, and sorry to keep you late.